Hey everybody, welcome to the Infinite Regression. What? How'd you get here? What sort of a deal with the devil did you lose? Huh? Why have you been dealing with the devil? Are you a Satanist? You have to tell me if you're a Satanist. That's the law. That's... <laughs> we all know the law. Officer, please do your duty to God and your country uh, to obey the law of the pack. Um, anyway... <laughs> And arrest this man for his avowed Satanism. This this nation of ours was founded on a belief that Emmy Lou Harris is the one and only true God. Anyway, infinite regression. You know what you did. Uh, look at this. Look at what we got going here. Hey, hey, you remember last week when a certain gentleman, a, a Mr. Crankshaft... I believe his name was a, a crankshaft gentleman read for the role of a uh, guy who reads th these words on the front of the slideshow. You know, it's really, when you say it out loud, it just sounds silly that that would be someone's job. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's, my goodness, my goodness, universe, you are, every now and then, your cosmic jokery is whew, hilarious. Yeah, someone is going to be employed to read this. Yeah, okay. I believe that, like I believe that a cat is pooping in a litter box that is clearly so full that... <laughs> That there is no litter to scoop on top. There's been a shortage of kitty litter. <laughs> Not in our house, but like in the town. And so, like, yeah, it clearly needs to be taken care of. Um, anyway, we are not negligent owners. <laughs> not that negligent, anyway. Uh, regardless... Moving on with our lives, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, here's the deal. Here's the dealio. The dealio of the dealio. Um, so, we had a Mr. Crankshaft read. We were all terrified of him. And then he was uh, finally um, found guilty on those charges that he had against him. And uh, so, the... The position is once again open, at least for the next 10 to 12 years. So, yeah, we are looking pretty good. Pretty good. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, the position is still available. Uh, the You know that I have argued in favor of, uh, was, it a, was it called that thing where you, like, let ladies and foreigners do it clemency is it called clemency is that the word no the one that means that you let like ladies and other other ethnicities and maybe even like gaynesses or whatever that they have going on that's like weird you know what i'm saying Whatever thing they have going on that's not that's not the same. Well, we got the people here in the room. You know what I'm saying? Diversity, Dad Gummit, you, you slick son of son of Sam, Samuel, Samuel could go either way. Boy name, girl name. You, how many girls have you met named Samuel? Huh? So many. Like, literally so many. It's short. It's, I mean, obviously, obviously, Samuel is short for Samuelantha. And, uh, girls don't want to be called that, apparently. And so they're like, call me Samuel. And it's like, yeah, if that was my name, I would be like, call me whatever. I'm putting my body in the ground. I mean, for reals, for real, none of this, like, stick around, see if it works out. Nope. Six feet U-N-D-E-R, friend. That's, that's how we fix that problem. 
Anyway, I'm I'm a problem solver. They said many things about Ram Pemberton, and they have, ladies and gentlemen. They have. Oh, the things they've said. Uh, problem solver. Problem solver is the thing that they've said that I've been like, you know what? You know what? I agree. I agree. I do get out there. I solve the problems. I find them. I snuff them out with my marvelous snifter that I uh, that I have. And uh, then I uh, I get right on that. So, yep. Anyway, uh, I believe... What's that? No, I was going to say something about how we have another candidate. I'm not going to do that thing where I go around the room and introduce all the white people. Because like, there's already enough white privilege in here. And we're already going to, like, run and trot another white guy out here for this job, you know? Definitely, definitely solving our, uh, what's that called? Uh, indemnity? Indemnity? Oh, diversity. I forgot again. I forgot what it's called when you let the ladies and the, uh, other ones, uh, do what we do. You know what I'm saying? Get, get a leg up in the biz. Leg up in the biz. That's what we're about. Here at Weekend Type Fun Productions, a subsidiary of the non-sober Badger Productions. You know this. You know this. You've seen the, the titular cards. Anyway, regardless. Regardless of how you feel about how many white people we have here. I mean, look. Look at how white this one is. Braxton, his last name is like... I'm a big old white guy or something. I forget what it is. I don't pay attention to that part of the show. I always skip it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so you're super white, obviously. I mean, first of all, that's in the name, but also in the everything about you all the time. Uh, so that's, you know, le, le essence du Braxton, the freaking the very nature of your being, you know what I'm saying? Just the unbearable whiteness of being Braxton, you know what I'm saying? That's where that's what we're getting at. Uh, I mean, not that Ian over here is doing himself any favors, you know what I'm saying? This guy, this guy, has 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 got this sort of like overpowered, overbearing type of ugly that could win a tractor pole, you know what I'm saying? He's got he's got a face that that you know the very forces of nature would run from it in an attempt to flee from its its ugliness. And that those forces fleeing as rapidly as they do would win in a tractor pull against like a monster truck or wait no this is a tractor pull because it's a tractor that looks like a monster truck i'm gonna have to look it up later i don't actually know what a tractor pull is i've heard about them i've never been to one i've been to a demolition derby that is a thing that has happened you gotta go backwards i didn't know that until i got there and i was like Oh, they go backwards. I always thought they went frontwards. I mean, in the movies, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ian over here has got a demolition derby face, which is what I was saying. I was saying uh, that because I understand demolition derby. There are other things I don't understand. Demolition derby, not one of them. Absolutely understand it. Therefore, you... With your demolition derby face, the after photo, not the before. Anyway, uh, come over here. Uh, yes, this, uh, you know, uh, screaming middle age crisis of a human being. Uh, you know, Chaz. Chaz, you screaming middle age crisis of a human. Like, wh what? Can one wear more Ed Hardy? Like, are are your underpants the Edward Hardy underpants? 
Is that is that what you brought with you? Is that what we are enjoying? Is that in our midst as we are here just try just trying to live our lives, man? Just trying to live our lives. Just trying to be regular people. And you're just here, here, just the whitest, the whitest ass white that I ever did see. You know what I'm saying? This freaking guy with your midlife crisis and you're like uh, dating your actual daughter's actual friend, which like, you know, if it happened last year, uh, it it would have been a crime. Does that not give you pause good sir it does not give you pause that you are separated by only a year from a crime so vile that uh gang members would shank you in the shower to find out that that's what you had done but by virtue of adding a year to that date you are like nope it's all good in the hood Daddy's got a new mommy in bed. This is what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's how you're living your life. And you actually call her mommy, even though she is your daughter's former ex bet Wait, no. Former. Either former or ex. Not former ex. Because, like, that means that they were, like, on speaking terms, which they are not. Uh, Yeah. Brittany knows what she did. Anyway, regardless, regardless, hey, hey. Of course she's named for Britney Spears. This, think about how young she is. Of course that lines up. That, seriously, the daughter of people who were into Britney Spears, that is exactly how old she is right now. That's factually accurate. That might be the most factually accurate thing I've ever pulled from the top of my head in my entire life. So, you know, just, yeah. Bet the horse race on that one. Is that the saying? Bet a horse race. Bet that a horse will race on that one, friend. Bet a, bet a horse will run in a race on that. Bet... Bet that horse racing's on Sunday, if that's a thing. Pretty sure one of those is right. Uh, anyway, so. Super White with his midlife crisis ass. Uh, Clarissa is over there drinking the whitest of wines. Uh, this, you know, uh, you you know how people with class and sophistication are like yeah A B C anything but Chardonnay because Chardonnay is like the white trash soccer mom of white wines. Well, Clarissa is the white trash soccer mom of white wine drinking white wineries. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, she is to white trash soccer moms what white wine is to wine meaning that she is the trashier version of that the the more alcoholic trashier version of the already quite trashy white wine drinking soccer mom a concept with which you are already familiar so like think about the wine that such a person drinks then think about that wine as a person. That's my friend Clarissa over here. We almost got married. I'm so glad I punched Stan in the mouth. You know, he would have let us get married. Clarissa, do you believe that? Oh, yeah, she just puked on Kaysen. Kaysen, another, like, yeah, anybody who takes a regular name like Jason and is like, nope, not good enough. Nope. The fact that that's been a name in the English language for hundreds of years. I don't respect that. That's not, that's not good for my child. Normalcy, you know, that's, that's not okay. The, we got to have them be the pre douchebaggerized. You know what I'm saying? We got to get them like, 
you know, pre-bagged full of douche. Uh, if we're going to send them out into the world and, and represent our interests, uh, the, the way that we have anyway, these freaking people this is ridiculous this is so white, so unbearably white Aiden with his parents of the canoeing type douche. Like, holy cow. Have you met those people? Have you met them? But meeting them has done, has done the of meeting. What? Has, seriously, these people, these people, like, he's all about riding mowers, and she is all about high-quality uh, high quilting supplies. You know what I'm saying? Like, high-quality quilting supplies. We're talking those, like, industrial friggin' quilting sewing machines that take up half the garage. You know what I'm saying? We're taking, talking, like, quality. Like, you know, like, if, if you were the, the kind of sewing machine where if you have one, you are either, you know, uh, a, a sweatshop <laughs> churning out quilts or, or barring that you are the world's most aggressively unlikable grandmother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just, you know, where you can't sit on anything or touch anything or laugh or have fun when she's around. You know, the the type of grandmother where you don't even care if she has a will. You just hope that she loses the will to live. You know what I'm saying? That. That kind of a sitch. <coughs> don't worry, I have the Rona. I have expressed this. It is true. <laughs> In the, the Rems of Pemberton's, doesn't matter which one you're talking about, the Rem Pemberton multiverse is hot with coronavirus right now. Just a real hot zone. Hot zone, baby. Just firing up that COVID. Just getting it up in ya. You know, it's just getting all over it. This is what we're doing. <sighs> yeah, I gotta get water because, like, my voice, La Voce, is not doing so well with the terrible virus that is coursing its way through my body hey hello i just come out with this guy he sounds very diverse but he is in fact the whitest one of us all have you not seen a spaniard they make white guys from like kansas look like guys with tans from south america and whatnot <coughs> We are talking white guys, guys who are so white they fall down when no one touches them in soccer. Those kind of white guys. <laughs> anyway, regardless, <laughs> those kind of white guys <laughs> who only drive the open wheel race cars. <laughs> They will not drive a NASCAR. They n do not drive this stock car at all. No, this is not for them. Open wheel racing, which is much faster, is much more respectable. Even motorcycle racing is more respectable for a gentleman than uh, stock car racing is a, is a toy for a child. <coughs> I don't know why I went rushing on the end there. I'm like literally dying of COVID right now. <sighs> Not dying, it's just killing me that my voice is so gone because I want to have fun with you. I've written fun and fun is like there to be had it. I'm trying, I'm trying to have it, but it's hard because my voice is not <laughs> participating fully. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's get him out here. Let's get the guy. Uh, last week was Crankshaft. <coughs> this week, this week, who we've got. Who we've got. 
His name is Fjeld Fjeldson. Is is he American? This Fjeld Fjeldson. He did that. Does not sound like an American name. Fjeld, are you an American? No. You don't look like an American. It's odd. Okay, well, this is an American show. But I guess Stan had a certain weird way of saying it anyway. So, you know, it's the years of lying. Not so much the years of drinking. The drinking is fine. That probably did him better than any any of those stupid meetings you used to always go to. Probably still goes to, for all I know. Anyway, that guy, piece of trash, hate him, puh, uh, but he did, with his magical voice, he did approach it with a certain like, oh, you know, like he's, like he's a dollar store Frank Oz character, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, Leroy the Grunch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he lives in a, lives in a freaking, uh, bathroom toilet side trash bin you know what i'm saying that's uh that's my guy leroy the grunch <laughs> boy that guy is not pleasant tell you that much but uh yeah action figures sell pretty well you know green guy in a rubbish bin you know well, like a smaller one than other popular children's characters use, you know, like enough to where you would have to be really drunk to mistake and to mistake the two. But luckily, luckily, like weekend dads do a lot of shopping at dollar stores. You know what I'm saying? Like who you think dollar stores are invented for? Dollar stores are invented for like two kinds of people number one moms who haven't kicked the habit that's number one number two are weekend dads who like are looking to score some points but are not willing to risk that much coin because they really don't know or understand their kids at all and so they've been burned before trying to buy something they're like oh cool look at this Look what dad got you. It's an autographed REO Speedwagon shirt. And the kid's like, what the hell is this? I hate you, dad. You're never there when I need you. And dad's like, this freaking REO Speedwagon. Like, how am I the bad guy here? You know what? I, The older I get, the more I can see dad's point. You know? But that's a guy... Shops at dollar store, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, mom who hasn't quit the habit. And by the way, you know, when weekend dad and mom who hasn't quit the habit, uh, you know, finally go looking for that rebound. Uh, once they start to not feeling quite so bad about the, uh, the separation, um, Though they find each other in each other's arms pretty darn quick. Let's just be honest there. Like, that's that is a love story nobody wanted, but it, it happens every day. Oh, boy. And then you get, you know, second kid. You get second kid who, uh, you know, is soon to be abandoned by dad. You know what I'm saying? Dad's not sticking around for second kid. You know, he couldn't make it work with first mom. How's he going to make it work with second mom? That's not even, he didn't even ask for this. You know what I'm saying? He was just, thought he was having a good time getting over it. You know what I'm saying? This guy, he's got problems. But he doesn't have the kind of coin that it takes to take care of a second kid. You know what I'm saying? He's already shopping at the dollar store for the first one. So... You know, that's where hip-hop comes from. <laughs> what? 
that's the dumbest thing I've ever said. And quite possibly the most racist. I, I am ashamed of that. I am ashamed of having said it. I am ashamed. Like, I am not joking. Like, that is shame on me. My apologies to everyone who's ever been born. Uh, if you are a human being. But I will swear I will find a billion Bibles that I will tell you that I was 100% thinking of insane clown posse fans. You know what I'm saying? Like, I should have said, and that's where juggalos come from, but that's not a word I could, like, conjure in my brain on the fly as I was, you know, riffing. It was riffing there, and that's what I came up with, and my brain was in a place where it was like, Hey, you know it's the fun the funny turn right here is uh juggalos. But I couldn't think that. And I'm like, uh they're a hip hop band? The Insane Clown Posse, that's who it is. And they have a gathering of the juggalos and they get together and it's apparently like a really chill event, even though these are the scariest people anyone has ever seen. You know what I'm saying? Like, that much clown makeup and failure at life goals meeting in the same place, you know, all driving cars with one mismatched door, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you just go in the parking lot and it's like just a, a quilted patchwork of, you know, uh, like uh, freaking, you know, uh, Honda Accords all with you know different colored doors and you, you wonder to yourself like hey if I if I just started pulling doors and trying to match them up by color would I end up with every car at this event having a door that matched the rest of the body it's entirely possible and I would love to see someone put this concept into practice but like the next time you're at a gathering of juggalos let's find out hey it's like everybody like look first of all we know that none of you are gonna come with all four of your wheel covers like you know you don't have alloy wheels you don't have anything cool you're not you know sporting rims He's got those old factory black ones that like you, you're ashamed of, so you hide it with a wheel cover. But the wheel cover doesn't even look that good, you know. And uh, you you put like you know 170 thousand miles on it, and that wheel cover is really not looking good. And uh, yeah, that's the one that stayed. The other three, God knows where they are. The uh, freaking side of the road in Tulsa, you know, is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And these people with their, you know, m mismatched uh, side doors on their cars and their sunroof that is made out of a trash bag because the original one broke when some crazy high out of his mind friend like was doing a dance on top of the car to some ICP song that none of the rest of us have ever heard of. So, you know, yeah, they are your life. They are your everything to the rest of us. It is baffling and confusing because we've heard it. It's not like we haven't heard it. We've heard it and we're like, it's fairly unremarkable. I mean, it's not like the best thing I've ever heard and it's certainly not the worst, but it's not like I'm not changing my life over this. I'm not like following him around on tour and, you know, not wearing as much deodorant and it, having parking lot babies with Kool-Aid stains on their mouths, you know, like, oh, geez, what that? No, uh, yeah, my brain's going places and I am not responsible for where it goes. 
because all I'm doing here is I'm just riffing, just riffing off the top of my head and possibly offending everyone who has ever heard me ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what we risk when we open our mouths now, you know? Does everybody be like, Ooh, what'd you mean there? What'd you mean with that that you were saying? You, you, you ready to come correct on answering for every potential interpretation of everything that you've ever said? You know? Because if you can't answer for it, then who d- skewered, you know? Like, we're just so ready to, like, oh, I can't wait to skewer you. Oh, boy. Yeah, make you sizzle like a steak, friend. Yeah, that's right. You're going to be, like, I, I'm a, I'm a base you with butter, friend. This is so skewered. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about kebabs. Anyway, uh... Kebab would be nice. If anyone's got a spare kebab, uh, I don't like onion that much, but I understand it's rolling seasoning things. I just won't, like, I won't eat the onion if you bring me one that has onion on it, but I won't be offended if it has onion on it. So you don't have to, like, make me a special one unless you've got, like, weird freak kebabs with ingredients I don't recognize immediately. You know what I'm saying? It's not that hard. <laughs> like, different colors of bell pepper. Uh, if you're some sort of monster, you're going to put some pineapple on there. Like, what? Hey, who asked for that? No sweets in with the savories. Come on. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I don't play that. I don't play that at all. <laughs> not my game. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I spent a half an hour just on, like riffing about nonsense and then having that nonsense turn ugly twice you know (laughs) like to where I've potentially offended and alienated two entire groups of people so you know all right I didn't even remember that's the sad thing I don't even remember what I did Uh, oh that's right Implying that uh, hip hop did not have a father <laughs> in the home <laughs> growing up <laughs> because dad left early. That's, yeah, that is an unfortunate stereotype. Not the one I was trying to put out there. I was just trying to be like, yeah, any, any kid that's like, which will, it will be a white kid because that's how this band's or group's audience tends to be is like strictly white trash for us by us but white trash version of that you know like and and, you know made by a couple of white trash guys for every other white trash guy ever made and their weird fat dyed hair oddly kinky girlfriend you know (laughs) like that's yeah That's that's who that's for. That, that's what that is. And, and like, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, like, saying that those guys with the weirdly, weirdly weird levels of devotion to a hip-hop group that dresses up like, or that paints their faces like clowns, Like, you have to freaking, you know, like, wrap your brain around that. It's like hip-hop kiss clowns. You know what I'm saying? Like, say that out loud and see if you have any self-respect left, you know? Oh, I like the, you know, kiss hip-hop clowns, you know? (laughs) Like, what? Yeah, I like the Gene Simmons one the most. (laughs) The Gene Simmons kiss hip hop clown. Oh boy, which one would that be? I don't know the names of the insane clowns in the posse. Is one of them like J? Something J? Or am I thinking of J and Silent Bob? I don't know. That is another. <sighs> that is another pop cultural artifact of its own. Anyway, hey, hey. 
calm down, everyone. I've got a handle on it. I'm not going to make it weirdly racial. <laughs> Probably. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. I do not remember a single slide that was written. And, like, I was there. I watched Braxton do it. I was like, oh, Braxton's doing all right. And then he had a couple that I was like, nah, Braxton, that is not going to work the way you think it's going to. And then he's like, nah, but I'm doubling back on it so people will know that, like, it, I'm putting it out there as something that is lame but is actually cool because of how, you know, self-acknowledgingly lame it is. And, like, people are going to get that. They'll understand. This is a simple process, you know? And I was like, uh... <laughs> Braxton, that sounds like a lot of space and assumptions between, like, words that I say and the haha. -ha. You know, I'm all about the haha. -ha. They might as well call me Captain Haha. -ha. Like, we've, t we've talked about this. I've mentioned this on the air on this program before. Uh, Braxton doesn't mu much put thought into, you know, like, how to, how to get the haha's coming uh, from the audience's mouths as a result of the things being said by Rem Pemberton's mouth, you know. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see. We, we shall find out. Uh, okay, so we got to get this freaking guy out here. Uh, we were terrified of Crankshaft. We're so happy that he's going to be gone for 10 to 12 uh, at least. Who knows, he might shank somebody while he's in there, and then it'll be another however many for that. So, you know, this is hope springs eternal. I mean, I, I hope I don't have to deal with him ever again. That was, uh, that I, I, let's just say it was not a career high point. You know what I'm saying? Not not a high point. Not Not something that I'm looking to put on my highlight reel, you know? Uh, won't come up at the reunion shows, you know, that's, this is what I'm talking about. Anyway, so we need to get a gentleman out here. The gentleman that we're not going to use, Mr. Crankshaft was too terrifying. Uh, but this fellow coming in next, he's, uh, he was just so charming and just so, like, put everyone at ease. We all felt like we were, you know, the only woman in the world. And, uh, yes, men included. It was a very uh, silently sensual uh, experience wherein uh, we all felt like a woman being uh, wined and dined at a level that's uh, not experienced by most, uh, you know, just generally attractive, but not mind bl blowingly gorgeous women. You know, we all got to know what it feels like to be pursued by and to be wine and dined by, uh, a, a wealthy gentleman, um, in, in acknowledgement of our, you know, specialness. That, that we totally have anyway that yeah we all experienced that like we experienced it openly anyway then don't ask me if i don't don't even like don't like just don't though but don't anyway uh hey let's just get this guy out here let's get him out here yeah and uh I don't remember his name. It was very Scandinavian. It was like Euron or like Blurnzel. Blurnzel? Is it Blurnzel? Well, that's what I'm calling you, so it's got to be something similar to that for sure. Anyway, Blurnzel, let's say the, the, the words. You want this job? You're going to have to earn it, friend. So get on up here and say it, Blurnzel. Okay, the sacred term of weekend type fun, volume 33, Pemberton and White Guy Editors. That was 
the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I, um, I am known for being a straight man, but, uh, what are you doing later, good sir? Like, I, I have questions that only you will be able to answer, I am sure. I am sure that that is the case, good sir. Please do not exit the building just because your one line is delivered. Please stay and see how the show goes. Please. Anyway, K. Uh, we've said the thing. We, we've heard it said by someone so incredible. It has us asking questions, questions we haven't even considered in quite some time. Not since college. Anyway, uh, with your host, Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pemberton. So look at me, aren't I a Dapper Dan? I've got myself a little neck rough, a little sateen, uh, a little uh, peekaboo type action there. It was like, oh, what are you seeing? Uh, you seeing through some, like, tool, you know? Uh, except for tool would have been ridiculous to make back then. Because now it's just like, uh, make it out of artificial fibers. And we'll just basically lay them down like that. <laughs> you know, but back in the day, it was like, I will have to weave it wider open and hope that it stays. <laughs> you know, it's insane. You consider that like they had the same sleeve technology that we have today for like see-through sleeves. And, um, you know, the technology, the idea behind it is exactly the same, except for this one would have been so much more labor intensive. Are we here to talk about the origins of Tool? That's T-O-U-L-L-E, not T-O-O-L. Not that band that you're always trying to get me to listen to. And I'm like, I've tried. I've given them so many, so many opportunities. <laughs> And I've really wanted to like them. I have openly, because I like progressive rock. I like metal. I, I like progressive metal. Like, what? What? Yeah. Why, why am I not losing my mind when these guys are happening? You know? Or, or at least bobbing along enjoyably. You know? Because otherwise, I, like, I'm normally like... Hey, who's this? Like, <laughs> that's my response. You know, not like, I'm really enjoying this, but like, who even is this? <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Come now, Rem. Play his lordship's glorious theme. You should better do it. This has always been the theme song. This right here, what I am singing, this has always been and will always be the theme. Yes, we are in complete agreement. The things that we have both been singing about are indeed the theme. And, and now it should be apparent to all personages within the sound of our voices that we have been singing the one and true theme song, the only theme song that exists and will ever be in the world. Amen. And what not? Cha. Oh, the cha. It always gets me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to be honest with you right now. Normally, normally, uh, I would like improvise heavily and just be like, this show is going to be nine billion hours long. And it's going to be so much heavier on the back end than it was on the front end. And the front end was way too front loaded. But like, you're going to lose your mind when you see how like, how I like schniggity schnoogity very slowly. <laughs> through the rest of the slides as I just come up with random crap off the top of my head. You know, uh, you um, have seen episodes that have been put together like that before. 
this is not what this one is going to be. I'm just telling you right now because I'm not going to stay up the kind of late that it would take for me to be able to do that. But on the other hand, I am trusting our friend Braxton who did a lovely job, possibly, possibly, because Braxton actually got together with Ian, who normally only does graphics for like, you know, ad campaigns for the show that don't go anywhere. You know, if it's something that is never seen or, uh, you know, something that, that is, you know, does not go viral, you know, like people uh, be putting their picture on a park bench, you know, for real estate. Yeah, the this smart guy Ian over here is like, oh, park bench, I, I can do you one better than that. I put you on the underside of a picnic table, you know, in the park. And uh, guess what? A lot of homeless guys know about it. A lot of homeless guys. There's some wicked homeless marketing. It's like, if that was our key demo, Ian, you would be killing it. You would be absolutely crushing it. If, if it was, you know, uh, people whose belt is a rope, you know, if, if that was our key demo, uh, then boy, boy, howdy, would you have hit that nail on the head? You know what I'm saying? Uh, if it was, you know, uh, people who have surprisingly well-kempt dogs, despite the fact that they smell like they haven't showered in a year, uh, if that was our key demo, then boy, you would have like put this over the fence home run, baby, you know, for real. But I just, ugh. okay. Okay. Come on. Pull it together because I did promise that we wouldn't prolong the agony. We would just get to the slides because we trust Braxton and he's done well by us this week. Okay, let's just do it and trust that the slides will be what they are because Braxton got together with Ian. Ian uh, took his thumb out of his butt and, uh, you know, actually. Uh, quit sniffing it long enough to, to help get some graphics together for this one. So it's a little more graphic oriented for those of you who are like, oh, well, they're reading. Boo. <laughs> when it's like, yeah, but there's some hilarious stuff in the reading. So I don't know what you're doing. Like last week, the funniest thing was in what was to be read was was not even there as a like you know a joke that I said out loud I didn't say it out loud I let it sit there on the screen knowing that people might skip over it you know but that like anybody who catches things who's like noticing things and reading things as they're coming by in the background is going to be like oh this this freaking guy this is ridiculous. Anyway, uh, okay, let's get it going. Tonight we present an a special episode. The Pemberton Guide to Things That Should Not Be But Sadly Are. Now, you, you, in order to fully understand and appreciate everything that follows, wrap your brain around that concept very quickly. Things that should not be that we shouldn't have allowed to exist, but are in spite of our best efforts. Okay, here we go. Be forewarned, that which is seen tonight cannot be unseen. Of course, this is also true of everything you've ever seen in your entire life. Even if you suffer a serious brain injury or develop a degenerative brain condition like Alzheimer's, you will simply forget what you have seen, which is not the same as unseeing it. We here at Weekend Type Fun do not support the usage of phrases which are either obviously untrue or physically impossible. This means that you will not be able to unsee anything, and we will not be able to take back anything we've said. If you are offended, 
we will simply encourage you to get back on the end and try again. Part the First Cryptozoological beasts bearing an unfortunate resemblance to beloved American actor Dwayne Johnson. Tehrock the Satyr. Urock the Camden Devil. Disrack the, the Centaur. Disrack. Pronounce it correctly. I was, I was thrown by the beauty of this beast. It's a very natural beast and very beautiful. Has everything you need in a beast. The centaur. They are beautiful, terrifying, passionate lovers. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Derock el chupacabra which is Spanish for the goat sucker, uh, because they swallow, they swallow the goats and they like suck them, suck all the life out of the goats and a lot of the blood too. <laughs> so, you know, the goat sucker, chupacabra, the, they apparently live right here in my home state. I've never seen one never seen anything like it. Anyway, Dwayne the Rockalope Johansson. Yeah. Or Jackalope. What? Rockalope. Oh, I see. I see what they've done there. Ah ha 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 ha. Yes. You know, the, the Jackalope, one of the more interesting American uh, monsters. It's, and he is a monster. You know, if you've seen, if you have watched, he is a, a, a terrifying thing. Anyway, but uh, yeah, jackalopes are plentiful, and uh, the humans are you know taking taking it back, taking back the night, you know, because uh, some of these rockalopes have been arrested uh, for terrible things, and some of these rockalopes are being subpoenaed for terrible things they've done, uh, for which they haven't even testified yet. Oh, it's going to be a weird time. Anyway, uh, definitely Rock the Rassler. Captain Squanch. Oh, that's a personal fave. Schlep Rock, my pet rock who sleeps in a tube sock. They could go a couple rounds with the Rock'em Sock'em robots. You know what I'm saying? He looks stout. I literally can't stop making these. Send help. I don't get it. Uh, it is weird. Okay. Part the second. Cryptozoological beasts of varied and sundry types which don't bear any particular resemblance to beloved American actor Dwayne Johnson whatsoever, but are nonetheless to be feared and avoided at all costs. The flaming leopard. Obviously. It's a giant jungle cat that can and will tear off your face. You know? Anyway, like we all watch Tiger King and the things that they're like, yeah, it happens. We're like, oh my God, if that happened to me, you would never see me anywhere. Like I would get court orders that the tigers have to stay freaking, you know, five miles away from me. You know? I'd let a judge hear it and, and have to look me in the eye and be like, is this guy crazy or does, is he being very sane? Anyway, uh, the butt-faced antelope, this freaking guy. I've had enough of his nonsense. Uh, the red-tufted seer squirrel. This is a very newly discovered species, uh, which, you know, the interesting thing about this guy is that he can see the future but he chooses to fixate only on the time and manner of his own death, which is the fate of all red tufted seer squirrels. It is horrifying to watch, but also very adorable. Anyway, uh, Ryan, the gayest bird in the world. He's never not fabulous. He literally wakes up like this. Do you understand? Do you see how pretty he is? 
This is what they call like a man pretty, you know, like a, a certain sexiness, a certain like, oh, hey, how are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, yeah, this guy has got like friggin' back hose full of it. People talk about like, oh, a shovel full. Of... No, like this guy is is bringing it hardcore. So prepare yourself for Ryan because he does not stop. Oh, I don't think I read the full thing. Yeah, Ryan, the gayest spur in the world. He's never not fabulous. He literally wakes up like this, the brilliant bastard. Yeah, true. I understand. Come on, this guy. Uh, wrong-headed dingus chicken. Let's see way too many of those in Havasu. Uh, the North American poser deer. Parents are not proud, but they're not, like, super concerned. Uh, the crystal-headed parrot. The only species of parrot which can talk without being taught how to talk, but won't shut up about astrology and vortexes. Oh, God, that sounds tedious. Dish. Yes, scientists are calling this a dish, which is a disappointment to us all. We wanted something different. You know what we wanted. You could say it out loud at your screen, unless you're, like, at work or at school or any of the places where my viewers would be right now. Anyway... Regardless, best of luck on that. I hear the packages are slight better. Uh, emphasis on slightly. So, you know, best of luck. Anyway. Oh, this is Protatory Stultus. He's the national bird of Murica. I mean, you've heard of America. But, you know, Murica, this is your guy. Anyway. Part the third. Cryptozoological beasts so imaginary we can't even imagine what they look like, but we're still fairly certain they don't look like beloved American actor Dwayne Johnson. Otherwise, we'd be having to imagine them by now, but you'd be wise to avoid them nonetheless. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. That is fair. Okay, this guy... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not I'm not giving up that easy. This is ridiculous. You come and get me. That's that's how we'll make that work. Anyway. Uh so uh, a creature which looks for all the world like a diagram of a regular polygon from a mathematics textbook. The figure on the left is <coughs> to the best of our knowledge a picture of an actual hexagon and not we can only assume the creature in question uh we only assume this because we've been able to take a sample there's been some very thorough testing science we don't mess around we want to know is this the guy is this not the guy you know is we're going to solve crimes with science. This is a new world. And we got to do it while being sexy on CBS. Anyway, moving on. A lizard-like creature which can only exist when it's being imagined by Arizona Senator Kirsten Cinema, who isn't particularly known for thinking much at all. Oh, she is not Zing. Zing, you got zinged, cinema, your move. Anyway, uh, and finally, a horse with a horn on its forehead who, despite being a confident heterosexual, is secretly concerned that other uh, cryptids suspect him of being a homosexual. This is an oddly homophobic thing for a horned horse to think especially because there's a simple test to see whether or not a horse is gay. All you have to do is look at his penis, and if it's in the mouth or the butt of another male horse, he's probably gay. That's, you know, any time in that two-month window, that's like, 
That's the golden time, you know. All right, Appendix A. Concepts of which we are not particularly fond. Oh, you put store all kinds of things down here for me, I tell you what. Uh, <coughs> oh, yeah, this, this goes in. Stubbing one's toe whilst navigating to one's bed at nighttime. Christian children figurines who look suspiciously like aliens. Oh, that is... I have always thought that. Uh, the Walmart penis tree decoration. This is actually, this was a real thing. I'm not kidding you. You may have seen screenshots of it and whatnot. My wife actually went out and found it, you know, because it was an actual thing. It was real. Like, because people were like, there's no way that, that freaking Walmart put this out. As a Christmas decoration. <coughs> and we were like, oh no, they totally did. Like, <coughs> the fun thing is, sorry, I was spraying that Rona everywhere. The fun thing is, is that nowhere in the description does it say what it actually is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if you just took the description of what the, the like what the website says this is, you would think that you were be, gonna be getting like, I don't know, some nutcrackers or a nativity scene or like some something actually Christmassy. But nope, this is this is what you get. So yeah, good times, good times. Uh, that you could spend your entire life being as earth-friendly as possible through making massive sacrifices in your personal life, and it would still be a drop in the bucket compared to what a government or a large corporation could do, but won't do with a small policy change. That's right. It's how greedy they are. They're like... But we make so much money, and it's like, well, could you make slightly less? And they're like... Yeah, we don't like that. And then the voice of the people is like, well, we do. <coughs> um. Oh, God. Oh. <coughs> um. Anyway, moving on. Almost there, friend. Come on, buddy. A maxim as true today as it was when George Washington's gay German, look it up, military advisor said it in 1777 during the Revolutionary War. The cat who wants the tummy rub is not always the cat who deserves it most. That, those are words to live your life by. This is factually accurate. Show's over. All right, good. My voice is dead. No closure. This program is made possible by the Igneous and Gertrudina Buttcomer Foundation and by viewers like you. Promotional considerations provided by Ralph Morgan's Extra Strangly Snakes, the Lonely Ass Librarians Guild, Grandpappy True Reels Foul Smelling Balms and Gruels, and the One and Only True God. This program was directed and performed by Rem Pemberton. A beautiful dream of a kitten just meandered into our yard. No, really. Like, oh my god, that kitten is so beautiful. And it felt dreamlike because I was like, I, I heard noise from our bedroom and I was like, I wonder if my wife is awake. And she was, but she's never awake at this hour. And, uh, and I was like, Levy, the most beautiful kitten. And she came and she's like, oh my God, <laughs> this kitten is so freaking beautiful. And it's like, we don't know where it came from. It smells, <coughs> it smells like fresh laundry, you know, it has got to come from somebody's house. Either that or was next to somebody's laundry room, but like. I would like to th believe in a world where a kitten this beautiful is loved and taken care of. 
because if they are not, like, we are, we are very concerned about falling in love with this kitten because we already have entirely too many cats. And, it, it, like, my daughter heard me telling my wife about it, and so my daughter woke up at an ungodly hour and was like, holy crap, look at this kitten. It's true. I'm not even joking. Like, we are so in love with this cat that we... It, it's not our cat. But she's so cute. I took a picture of my wife holding her. Like, she is amazing. Anyway. Um, <laughs> written by Braxton White Guy. He's uh, thinking about that kitten. I know he is. Theme song by the Out of Tuners. A presentation of non-Silver Badger Productions. Yes, it was. <laughs> A subsidiary of the large, boring set because like <coughs> non-sober badge productions because frick I have COVID right now like I have it not I was exposed to it or nobody knows if I have it or not but I have some symptoms and maybe I should get tested like no I've been tested twice and I have it like both tests were very strong they were like bing 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 you want a free case of covid you know <sighs> so yeah anyway regardless a subsidiary of the large boring sounding corporation with surprisingly questionable business practices level asset holdings incorporated a branch of the intentionally vague corporation whose purpose may never be known the blame group and communism, not dead yet, suckers. This week's lucky listener getaway giveaway, Cicerino Cheech Piccarelli. Uh, is that the Cheech from the beach who tripped on a peach while giving a speech on how to teach and then his shorts he did breach and tell all the beach going, each beach going teach got a long look at, it, look at his peach? Not a, boo, hey. Got a long look. Sorry, I don't edit. But, yeah. Oh, God, this is a bad one, people. Try it again. Take two. Is that the cheese from the... Be <laughs> God damn it. This whole thing's been a nightmare from start to finish. God damn it. My apologies to all persons living and dead who bear no resemblance to anything I've said, but, like, w are no doubt offended, even still. <laughs> and justifiably so. Anyway, regardless. Okay. Cicerino Cheech Piccarelli. Is that the Cheech from the beach who tripped on a peach while giving a speech on how to teach and then his shorts he did breach until each beach-going teach got a long look at his paniche? If you know what I mean, is that is that the Cheech? <coughs> really, the same guy? Wow, what fun! Oh my god, I can't believe it. I'm coughing like a COVID patient. Oh god. Okay, Let's finish up, dude. This is our lucky winner wins a partial expense paid vacation too. Scenic downtown Woodbridge, New Jersey, where you'll stay at the fabulous travel lodge and dine at the lovely Cracker Barrel, where the real crackers eat, just off the interstate and within walking distance from the hotel. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, those are the end of the words that I'm going to be saying for this episode. It's free ridiculous. How much my throat is like, no, but cough, though, like hard. Shred it. <laughs> when you cough, just slice it like a freaking uh, overripe tomato with, with a very sharp chef knife. Like, just whoosh. Just slice that menace right there. Anyway, regardless, hey, hey, friends. Did you, did you enjoy any part of that? I enjoyed writing it. <laughs> Performing it was kind of a pain. I'm not going to lie. It was really a chore. 
to have to do. It was. And now I'm done. And now I can go to bed. Okay. Bye.